Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hello, welcome to the Silk Series. This is Doug uh, and your co-host Pam. Pam, are you with me? I think so. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I think so. You, I think this is my voice. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, how are you doing today? Um, hot and muggy in Chicago, but happy to be here. Oh, yes. This is a day that we've all been waiting for. Uh, tonight we have the one and only daytime Emmy winning Greg Ricard with us. Welcome, Greg. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you Hi, doing? Hi, Greg. I'm great. My phone, uh, my ear isn't sweating into my phone, so I think I'm doing <laughs> slightly better than you guys are. <laughs> oh. Okay. Inside joke for those that don't know. My ear Sorry. was sweating. They're sweating, Greg They're sweating in Chicago. It. It's a little more temperate here in L.A. right now. <laughs> uh, I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Um, We're very excited. It's uh, been a while uh, to try to get in touch with you, um, but we got it done. And um, yeah. actually, I don't, I don't know if you recall, you were in Atlantic City a few months ago, and a friend of a fan and friend of ours, Michelle, came up to you and told you about our show. And, and I think she sent you something uh, to the studio that has to do with dodgeball, I think a T-shirt or... Um, yeah, you know, she. Um, I believe she tweeted me about it too. And um, sometimes it takes a while for mail to get through and whatnot. But uh, and then they also catalog the mail up in the office, and it takes a while to get to us. But I still haven't gotten it, so I hope it comes soon because uh, I'm anxiously awaiting my gift from Michelle. Oh, okay. Ah. And she'll be calling in too. Uh, we told her you have to. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous okay. to call. Just call in. Okay. A lot of people get nervous when uh, you know we, we have people on the air, and you know. Th- we're we're the nervous ones because you know we're the big fans that created the show and you know but it just seems like we're just talking to old friends you know as the interviews go it just seems like we're just best buddies and we're just catching up on old times and I yeah I mean we're all that, you know exactly that's how I feel even when I get a little starstruck if I meet somebody I remind myself they put their pants on one leg at a time just like right I, just like everybody <laughs> yeah so, so who do you get starstruck by um, I tend to get starstruck over. Uh, kind of like TV icons of the 80s, like the people I grew up watching, you know? Oh, like, okay. Not yeah. necessarily the big stars of today, but more so mm-hmm. like, you know, especially sitcom stars of like shows that I watched when I was a kid. Yeah. I met Tracy Goldman. I about Boston. Oh, wow. Yeah, people like that. <laughs> I can understand that. I mean, that's how we feel when we're speaking with you. Well, yeah, I mean, it's you sort know? of, uh, it's, you know, I don't watch as much television these days as I used to, so for me it's sort of like at a time when it was um, kind of a more integral part of my life, and I think I was really um, impressionable to the things I was watching on TV and the shows I was watching. It's like, you know, it is it is more meaningful than just being entertained by somebody. It's like, you know, whether you're right. learning something or being challenged in some way, It's uh, I think it's a terrific art form, and I'm happy to be a part of it. And the role of Kevin was only originally supposed to be 10 episodes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, let's see, today is, oh, my gosh, today is uh, my nine-year anniversary. Oh. oh well, congratulations. Thanks. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Thanks. I I, uh, I still have my script from June 8th, uh, 2003. So, yeah, nine years oh, ago. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, when I first auditioned, it was, uh, you know, it was the summertime, and it was just supposed to be a 10-episode summer arc where, this bad guy was supposed to come to town and cause some trouble for Lily and Colleen, and um, and then he was going to go away or he was going to die or something. And uh, yeah. And I um, and I had uh, you know I had a good audition, which doesn't always happen, but you know I guess the stars aligned and I really had fun with the material. And after I was done with my audition, I got a phone call from my from my manager asking if I would be interested in in it having it be, you know, more of like a three- or six-month arc on the show. And, you know, I was – I had just wrapped uh, on Dawson's Creek a few months earlier and was unemployed, and I was like, yeah, that sounds like it would be a really fun way to sort of spend the summer. And um, and then after a few months, they, they asked me to stick around even longer, and that was when they hatched the story to, uh, to make Kevin and Michael brothers and then a little – while after that, they brought on Gloria. So it really, um, I was just so blessed with the material I was given and how much the fans were responding to it. And it was sort of kismet the way it all 
played out, and I'm just uh, grateful every single day. Yes, we well, are. Well, I don't know anybody that doesn't love Kevin crazy or hmm. straight. So, <laughs> I like him better when he's crazy. But uh, yeah, yeah, know. yeah. Well, right now we've got some craziness going on, but once those crazies go, maybe Kevin can be crazy again. Your sister uh, is uh, definitely crazy, and uh, I, um, we, we know that she's no longer going to be with us anymore. Uh, so it's going to be sad to see the character leave us. So yeah, when, well, uh, she, um, what was nice about uh, some stuff that we'll see play out in the next few weeks is that um, she's, you know, she's really gotten the short end of the stick with regard to um, you know, people's perceptions of her, and she comes to Kevin sort of asking for some support because, you know, in her uh, in her argument, it's like if anyone can understand what she's going through and how she's trying to change, it's Kevin. And so yeah. there is a really, um, there are some interesting changes in their relationship that happen, and right as the relationship could potentially be moving in a new direction, you know, her fate is sort of sealed. So it's uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna make for some good stuff. Yeah, that's, well, that's too that's bad that. in a way because we felt that way about Angelina at first too that we weren't crazy about her because she was just kind of almost annoying and yeah, she was breaking she was, uh, up you and and Chloe and that and but then as the time ended for her we fell in love with her and it, especially when she did a regular her real singing and a real oh, yeah. you know it just well, I think it, like, it you made know, when, a big difference. Of course, and I think, uh, you know, when the character first came on, it was really campy, and um, mm-hmm. and it was more of a caricature, and then because Diana was so talented, she really grounded it and brought some heart to it, and I always think those are the, uh, the characters we connect to the most and respond to are the ones that are, that are sort of taking us on the emotional journey with them, and I think that really was happening uh, with that character, um, not maybe not at first when she was sort of you know doing the camp, but as it started to get more and more grounded and real, and um, I think that was a pretty common response. People who were not crazy about her at first really started to uh, feel for her because she was so vulnerable, vulnerable and sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, but never say never, you know. I mean, people come and go all the time and then come back. So. Yeah, you, ne- you never you never do know. Uh, we just had Diana on a couple weeks ago, actually a couple days before her uh, fiance proposed to her on Idol. Oh, yeah. kind of awesome. It's yeah. awesome to hear. But uh, she was such a fantastic sweetheart, and she said that you're easy on the eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, she's not so tough on the eyes herself, but that's very exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, she's really really good. Um, but yeah, Kevin's been a, a bad boy. Uh, you know, statutory rape, attempted murder, arson, breaking entry, stealing money, assault, computer hijacking. I mean, the list goes on. Wearing a, Jeez, is a that chipmunk. all? <laughs> uh, well, no, there's more, but I I can't remember offhand. But you, chipmunk suit. Now that was hysterical. You got to tell me how that how was that for you when you got the script and saw you had to wear a chipmunk outfit. Um, I wasn't happy, if I'm being honest. Uh, yeah. I I joked around, and I still do. It's sort of uh, an inside joke between Maria and myself. That when I when it first started, when the story first started playing out, I'd see her in the hallways and I'd be like, "Are you mad at me? Like, what did I do? I'm so sorry, <laughs> but whatever it is that I've done, I apologize." And um, but uh, it sort of became a joke, and she was really um, kind in explaining to me that she felt like if anybody could bring reality to that story and ground it, it was me. And I mean, yeah, and, and come on, she knew the the perfect way to an actor's. Uh, heart is through their ego, so I was like, okay, Maria, anything for you, of course I do. <laughs> yeah. And um, and funny enough, I was just at a birthday party last week and ran into um, this lovely woman named Anna, who was the, she's a really uh, terrific actress who also does a lot of voiceovers, and she was the voice of the chipmunk. <laughs> so, um, oh. so it's... It's funny that it's coming up right now because it's really a story I haven't thought about in a long time, and it's not necessarily something I talk about often. But um, having seen her just last week, and we were at this party and uh, talking about the story, it was really funny that it was so um, it was on my mind because, like I said, it just sort of came up. And then I, uh, she told me there was these videos on YouTube, so I went and watched, and I was like, oh yeah, that story. It was 
hard to believe it was like three years ago. But um, anyway, so I was just thinking about that, and now we're talking about it. So um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, it was it was tough. It was hard, but uh, it was a challenge. And you know, I feel like if your job, after however many years you've been doing it, can still find a way to challenge you and keep you engaged in a way that's different than what it has been or is on the day to day, then that was good. So I think, again, I looking back, it's not my favorite thing that I've done, but um, yeah. but I am really grateful for having done it. And yeah. You know, as silly as it sort of was sometimes, it was uh, it was unique. You know, look for the silver yeah. lining. It challenged me, and it was unique, and uh, and I am really ultimately glad that I got to play it. Yeah, when when I when I uh, think back to the scenes where uh, Tom locked you in the the closet and you were the, the, so emotional, that was pure joy to see you at your finest. You were so emotional, and you were amazing acting at that moment. Oh, okay. uh, I mean, that that right there is. A reason why you know you, you won an award. I mean, you should win every award you're nominated for because you, when when you're pushed to the limit of that emotional side, it's just you were fantastic. And I mean, I'm, I believe me and the fans were in tears with you when you were suffering with uh, what Kevin was going through. Oh, thanks so much. It really, um, you know, I, it's, it's, it's it, that really means a lot. I mean, it's kind of you know we're, I think all actors are doing it because that's the goal is to sort of tell a story that has an emotional impact, whether it's to make someone laugh or get angry or cry or whatnot. And, um, yeah, so I really appreciate the, that that was your reaction to it. It was, um, I, you know, I, I always say too, it's like they write, they write the stuff and they, they make it easy to play because, you know, those scenes were so heartbreaking that I would get emotional just reading them on the, reading them on the page. So living in that, you know, so then taking it to the next level and say, "Oh, this is not someone else's circumstances. These are, these are mine." That makes it so much more painful and yeah. easier to sort of access that uh, whatever emotions need, you know, are necessary to sort of portray that. Yeah. Is it Have easy the- for you to leave those emotions at the studio when you leave for the day, or do you sometimes carry those home with you? I carry them home. I tend to carry them home with me, and. Um, oh. You know, it's I you know I'll have a glass of wine and I'll shake it, but okay. Sometimes it stays with me a little bit, which is all right. Kind of reminds me that it happened, and and ultimately, even if it stays with me and I'm sad for a little while, I'm still glad that I I got to play or do or connect in a way that was truly emotionally moving. I mean, if I, I, I frankly on the days that that I don't go home with it, it's sort of like, oh, I, I must have not fully been invested or connected. No, mm, okay. Yeah. Do you watch yourself on TV at all? Do you, do you criticize yourself? Do you say, oh, I could have did that differently? Or, uh, I mean, I definitely watch myself. I am critical, but not necessarily in the way of like, oh, I wish I would have done that differently. It usually comes okay. out more, more like, I tend to think to myself sometimes, oh, that felt different than it looks, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. it felt um, in some ways more emotional or funnier or whatever it was. It felt, And then I see it on TV and I'm like, oh, I don't know that it, that the way I'm perceiving it now really captures how I remember feeling about it in the moment. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there's no, I mean, I guess I try not to be a Monday morning, morning quarterback and say, oh, I wish I would have done that differently because... You know, where, where does that get me? <laughs> right, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> the moment's over and you can't do it again, so yeah, yeah. why bother feeling that way? Totally. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure uh, what Pam's thought is, but my favorite uh, relationship that Kevin's been with is Jana. Jana, played by Emily O'Brien, mm-hmm. fantastic actress. I she loved you wonderful. two together. Uh, she was, it was wonderful. Yeah, she was, thank you. She was wonderful, and I, I loved working with her, and I miss her, and... Uh, I loved that relationship too. Yeah, she was just—you guys were perfect. Um, she was just so beautiful, and and the, when she went through her goth phase, and I mean, it's just you know, it's just really crazy. And then she had to be written off sadly, and yeah. now we're fighting to see you with uh, with Kevin with uh, Chloe now. Now that Angelina's yeah. gone. Yeah, I think um, Emily. What I loved so much about her character is like she was so quirky. <laughs> And so yeah. specific, and I, I just thought she was 
she complimented Kevin so well because I think Kevin's kind of weird too, but she was weird in such a <laughs> an eccentric, artistic way, and kind mm-hmm, of more mm-hmm. weird just in a in a neurotic kind of nerdy way. And so it was a really fun yin yang. I thought I really loved that relationship. And yeah. um, and you know, I mean, like I said, while I was sad to see her go, I think we had we were married or were together for over three years, so we had yeah lots of fun capers and stories and and serious stuff that we got to play and um I mean there's so much. I remember uh looking at uh potential um submission tapes for the Emmys last year and uh watching some of the stuff we got to do just in the last just in that last year and there was so much. I mean I feel like every time we got to work together we were doing something that was really fun and special. Yeah. So what uh, what got you into uh, acting? I, I read that you were when you were in college, you were um, an intern for a congressman. On, yeah, yeah. Right? Um, so that's a big that's a big change there. What what got big what, difference? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was uh, I think acting was something that I always uh, I always enjoyed. I just don't know how much I when I was younger I considered it as a viable option for a career. Um, and I've always been interested in politics as well. And mm-hmm. when I was in college, I had the opportunity to go work for my congressman, uh, who who uh, was rep- I grew up on Staten Island. He was uh, New York New York's 13th district, which is Staten Island and a piece of Brooklyn. And um, so I went to D.C. and I spent six months uh, in his office, and it was really fun, and I learned a lot. And I think I decided that. Um, my interest in politics was not something I wanted to pursue as a career. It was just something that would always be so, uh, something I was interested in, but not necessarily passionate enough about to uh, to make a career out of it. So then I was like, well, now what? <laughs> College was kind of winding down, and I thought about maybe taking the I, – I did actually take the LSATs. So I thought about maybe going to law school, and I'd always taken some theater classes and uh, always enjoyed acting, and then I thought, well, I'm young. I have no real responsibilities or commitments. And if I did want to move to Los Angeles and pursue an acting career, like, why not try it? What do I have to lose? And um, so I did. So I moved out to L.A. and spent about three or four years waiting tables and painting houses and working in retail and just doing odd jobs to pay the bills. And then little by little I started uh getting better at my auditions and getting small parts here and there and everyone will tell you it's kind of like a snowball so the little yeah. part lead to the bigger parts and uh, next thing I knew I was up and running so I'm grateful that I uh, that I that I thought hey this is worth giving it a shot yeah and we are too <laughs> yeah thanks <laughs> yeah um, yeah it's kind of crazy when I look back and I think that I remember thinking what, is, what are my parents going to say when I tell them, yeah. I know you just spent $100,000 on my college education, <laughs> but I'm going to go out to L.A. and be a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> and what did they say? <laughs> um, they said, are you fucking crazy? No. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> they were, you know, they were supportive and concerned and, you know, like any good parent uh, mm-hmm. would say they want you to be happy, but I know that they were also, you know, the odds are, the odds are, not in your favor when right you know you and thousands of other people every day are coming here to pursue the same dreams and you know so um supportive but also concerned <laughs> and then uh <laughs> you know but uh they're they're they've always been wonderful and supportive and and I think they're very happy that uh that I made the choices that I made yeah yeah and um, and being very successful at what you are doing too yeah yeah i think um you know, I, I think that they enjoyed my Emmy moment as much as, if not more, than I did. So, oh, I'm oh, yeah. sure that, was that had to be. I, uh, I, I, I could have been cheered. I was so excited for yeah, it. Yeah, so <laughs> fun, so fun, and I'm so glad that it happened in New York and at Radio City Music Hall. It was just such a special, once in a lifetime moment. You know, I've been nominated right. again, and. Uh, and I thought about like, oh, what would, would it be like to to win another one? But um, and it would be amazing. Don't get me wrong. But that experience right. that night, having my family there, being in New York, um, 
it was just so special. And um, yeah, something I really treasure. And where is where your do Emmy you right now? Your Emmy? Oh. It's on my mantle. <laughs> it's on my mantle above the uh, above my fireplace. Oh, perfect. That, yeah. that's and be you a, dust it off, right? I was, I was, you know, you I, right, as, uh, right as I said that, I was like, when was the last time I dusted it off? I might need to <laughs> pick it up and make sure she's doing okay. <laughs> um, I also remember you back in the day. Well, not back in the day. It's been a little while. Uh, on Dawson's Creek. Uh, yeah. How, what was that experience like for you, working on primetime versus daytime? Um, it was great. That was my – that uh, Dawson's Creek was the job that allowed me to quit my restaurant job so that was that was my break. I always like to say, and it was um, you know I literally on Friday afternoon I was I was at the restaurant. I used to work at California Pizza Kitchen, um, waiting tables, and I got a phone call that I had booked. You know it was supposed to be three or four episodes, and on Monday morning I was you know getting flown first class to North Carolina. So it literally changed like that for me, and uh, that was a great experience. It was. Um, it was a lot easier, I think. We were yeah. doing like just a couple of pages a day, and I remember working with Jensen Ackles, who had been on Days of Our Lives, and mm-hmm. he was so technically proficient uh, with everything. Like one day we were doing a scene, and halfway through the scene, I just saw him adjust, you know, where his weight was on his left foot, and he just sort of adjusted over to his right. And then when we were done with the take, I said, "What, did, what were you doing?" He said, "Oh, I was in your light," and it was something that ah. my having such little experience never would have picked up on, but he had been working on a soap for so long that, you know, he had all the technical stuff down, and I remember thinking, oh, that's what, when people say that soap actors really sort of uh, have the toughest job, it's because you have to be so um, technical in in a lot of what you do. And for me, the experience was great. I think um, the the cast members on that show were kind of, it was the last season, and they'd been at it for six years, and I think they were kind of eager to all move on to whatever was going to be next for them. So my memory is that the guest stars on that show, Jensen and uh, Bianca Kylik and, um, you know, some of uh, the rest of us who were, had just gotten there or were only there for the last season were kind of more uh, sort of stuck together a little more because we were more excited to be there than the, than the people who had been there for five or six years already. Mm-hmm. And Bianca, this is funny enough, um, do you know who she is? She's uh, she works now on Rules of Engagement. Yeah. She was in that last season of Dawson's Creek too. She and I are doing mm-hmm. a uh, um, a charity one act play together next month. Uh, oh, cool! Called Snapshots, and it benefits um, uh, the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation. And Wonderful. that was a happy reunion. We hadn't seen each other in nine years since we worked on Dawson's Creek together. Now we're playing uh, boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> oh, wow! Yeah. Uh, did you uh, have you kept in touch with Kerr at all? Kerr Smith. Uh, played... I haven't. No. I um, I ran into his his uh, his wife or his ex wife or uh, a, a woman that he was involved with when when I when we were in North Carolina just recently at the Coldplay concert at the Hollywood Bowl. But no, him I haven't seen. Uh, I run into. Bianca occasionally, and uh, I live in the same neighborhood as Busy Phillips, and Busy and mm-hmm. I run into each other sometimes. Oh wow! Yeah, that was a great that was a great show, and it was a great to uh, to see you. Uh, you know, I liked it. You know, it was a short stint, but I was so glad when you got on Young and I was like, ah, good, we get to have more uh, Greg. Yeah, I was. You know, I think um, I think it was that job that, in some way or another, led to this job because Marnie Saida, who was our casting director, was a fan of Dawson's Creek and. Uh, that's why she brought me in for this role. So it was, uh, you know, like I said, when that snowball gets rolling, it just kind of gets bigger right. and bigger. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's funny, I used to watch Dawson's Creek at work um, mm-hmm. because I worked nights at this call center, and in the evenings, of course, it would always slow down. And we had this little, tiny little TV, and there would be about ten of us <laughs> around it watching and then when somebody's phone would ring we'd be like ah oh, darn it you know <laughs> cuz you have to so funny what we had the, the sound down we had to take before we had TiVo and DVR yeah, and yeah. you could pause yeah. TV it's crazy yeah. Yeah. exactly it's amazing how quickly it's all changed i remember when yeah. Yeah, TiVo was first uh around and if you had TiVo it was such a big deal and you know now it's like everybody has cable everybody has TV people watch you know sometimes if I'm at work and I have my computer, I'll catch up on mm-hmm. some episodes of uh, Young and Restless 
on my computer. It's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah and phones, everything, mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, it was it was funny to watch that way. So. Yeah, yeah, I remember, and we would do that in college too with friends. <laughs> so how's the how's the dodgeball going? Are you, is that is it on right now, or is it? Uh, we're in not between seasons. seasons. We start up again, oh, okay. I think, either next week or the week after. But it's so okay. fun. It's so fun. It's yeah. like, you know, grown men and women throwing dodgeballs at each other. It's like, <laughs> I, you know, I, I I work out at a gym. I play tennis, which I have done since I was a kid. But there's nothing else that I do uh, physically that makes me feel like more like a 10-year-old. It's so fun to just, you know, run around crazy on a dodgeball court throwing balls at people. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> so fun. So fun. And I'm pretty good. Do you wear a lot of body pads for that? No, <laughs> the balls are like, the balls are, uh, remember those kickballs that, you know, would be on a kickball court? They're sort of like those. So they're they're yeah. soft enough that if you get hit with one, even if it's really hard, it'll kind of mm-hmm. stun you for a minute, but they don't really sting. So, oh, okay. Uh, so I've never I've never been injured. It's more like if you get a ball to the face, you're like, whoa. <laughs> I was yeah. So if we yeah. see um, Kevin it, walking around with a bruise on his face, we'll know, know that it possibly oh, yeah. came and from there. You can, it'll be our inside joke. You'll be like, oh, he clearly <laughs> took a dodgeball to the to the left eye. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's some uh, questions from Twitter, and one of them I just happened to, to go back to Young and Restless. Uh, it says, does Greg believe in, in story that Daisy Ryder are truly Kevin's siblings? And regardless, how does he feel about that twist? I be- yeah, sure, I believe it. I mean, it's not like Tom was this super ethical, faithful guy who had this wonderful marriage to Gloria, so I am not at all surprised if he would have not only two other kids, but potentially even more kids out there in the world. Uh, yeah. So I wasn't surprised by that. And how did I feel about it? Um, I liked it. I think it you know, it just adds another layer, another dimension, and gives you something to play that's different from anything I've played before, yeah. you know, finding out I... Yeah had a brother, which was, you know, even though it was a surprise for the audience when the, it was revealed that Kevin and Michael were brothers, it wasn't it wasn't a surprise for Kevin because he grew up with Michael. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, so I uh, I was on board with that. I was down yeah. with that. And um, Kevin and Gloria is amongst the most awesome mother-son pairings ever. So Aren't delicious, we just the like, best? Gri- like, like grifters. <laughs> I, would you like to see another front burner storyline with you and uh, Judith? Oh, are you kidding? Those are my favorite. Yeah. Oh, so, uh She's just, she's just so lovely and amazing and talented and, um, and, and I'm so entertained by her in real life that it makes it so easy for me to react to her as Kevin, <laughs> you know, like whenever she does something mm-hmm. crazy and just be like, you know, want to roll my eyes at her or make a face. It's like, <laughs> it's uh, there is something very sort of maternal uh, about the way I feel towards her and our relationship. So yeah, I think she's just the best. Yeah. And uh, also, um, you were t- you tweeted and you've been advocated you advocated heavily for GCB, the the, the Good Christian Bitches show that yeah, was amazing had, on ABC. I had some how friends do you, do you... who were who were closely involved in that show and writing on it, and um, so that's why I was promoting it. And uh, yeah, it was such um, a great show. It was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. And, uh, I'm sad. I'm sad that it that it didn't last longer than uh, than it did. I think. Um, you know, I think they were really starting to find their their footing, and I think uh, figuring mm-hmm. out how to mix the camp with you know a little more uh, with some story that was a little more grounded. But yeah, it's too bad they won't um, get to tell any more stories. But what was the second part of the question? Oh, I, I was just how you uh, uh, the next part was uh, would you ever uh, like to do a guest spot on something on prime time? Oh, sure, yeah. Because I, mean, I know you had some in your earlier career, but. Uh, you know anything that's on? Is there anything on now that in prime time that you'd like to see yourself play a guest spot? Um, let's see. Like a favorite show? Uh, what shows am I watching these days? Uh, I watched Dexter. I love Dexter. Oh, that would be a fun show Dexter. to work on, especially because uh, so many of the guest stars on that show are so dark. Um, yeah. Uh, that would be a fun show. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of excited about some of the new shows that are. Sorry, there's a helicopter going over my house. Uh, okay. I'm excited about some of the new shows that are coming out, but um, yeah, I mean, if I had to say one, it would definitely be Dexter. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, the the one show that I saw you talking about on Twitter that I'm excited too about is the new normal. Oh, the new normal. Yes, yes. Oh, oh that looks so good. Yeah, I've I got. I cannot to, wait until. Yeah, I've got some people uh, working on that too, and um, uh, yeah, just uh, that's as far as um, my kind of storytelling. I really love comedies that you know, sort of like um, comedies that have heart. So it sort of grounds mm-hmm. the the humor yeah. in something that's real. And that show seems to seems that it's going to have a lot of that, so I'm excited about that one too. Yeah, definitely. Pam, I know you have some uh, Twitter questions. You want to go ahead and ask those? I do, and he's answered a couple of them. So um, t- looking just now uh, from Anthony in our chat room, though, he said, "What do you think of Kevin coming on the show the same way as his brother Michael and transitioning from bad guy to good guy? Is it in the gene pool?" <laughs> well, I would say so, especially. Um, yeah. You know, I said especially it, given that it's not just Kevin and Michael, but we've seen with Ryder and Daisy, there's a whole bunch exactly. of rotten DNA floating around our gene pool. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting is you can't even blame it all on Tom because no, you know Michael. Uh, so you know Michael, Michael's father was uh, was someone else, and you know I mean we've all seen Gloria uh, do some less yeah. ethical things. So you know yeah. we were kind of getting it from both ends. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have from, let's see, um, I will do Nancy Richard Four from Twitter. What is your favorite storyline you ever did? Um, hmm. Gosh, that's a tough one. There's so many. I mean, as far as like full arcs and full stories, I loved the reveal of uh, Michael and Kevin. I... Uh, I loved the, I loved his introduction to the show. I think it was just so interesting and unique, being an internet predator, and really right. um, coming on and being this this diabolical character who is out to harm this like young, sweet, innocent girl was such a, you know, was just a really sort of splashy way to make an entrance. I think, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think subsequently, all of the stuff that preceded that to, um, or I should, I should say, came after that to to redeem him and to uh, to to layer him and, and make people see that he's not just this monster, but he's someone with a lot of scars and a lot of pain. And then that journey of finding out what they were and and how he was trying to overcome them and learning about Tom and his childhood, all of that stuff was. Um, in my opinion, really, really fun to play and interesting. And then, um, then like the second wave and the lighter stuff that sort of came uh, once he was quote unquote better. And you know, there was I think more of the comedic stuff I've gotten to do sort of came in what I like to think is like the second act of his mm-hmm. time there with uh, you know the stuff that happened with Gloria and. You know, when we'd be on a caper or something like that, and and then a lot of the lighter stuff that came with Emily, and there was a really fun storyline that I really enjoyed, uh, because not because it was so heavy, but more just because it was light and silly, with yeah. uh, Amber and Daniel when there was the dead body and the money, and we were trying to. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, so and what I like too is that there tends to usually be this balance where I'll do something kind of heavy and. Uh, emotionally draining, and then it'll be followed up with something that is lighter and more fun to play. And um, let's see. And in recent memory, I have a one of my favorite episodes is the New Year's episode from when Kevin and Chloe first got together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which not as a as an entire story, but uh, just that one episode in particular, I just thought was so well written, and the payoff was just so nice. I thought at the end, and it was really just romantic and sweet to see. Uh, Kevin and Chloe sort of come together the way they did. Yeah. I also have a question from Enrique. <clears throat> he says, what direction would you like to see Kevin go? And I'm going to add a little bit to that and say, especially now that your brother is going to be the DA. Well, um, to me, I would love to see him uh, get involved in something illegal or unethical or something where he might get himself into some hot water and then see how uh, 
because I think the full story to be told there and then to see how it affects his relationship with Michael and the challenges that it would present to Michael to sort of either adhere to what his job is or to take mm-hmm. take up for his brother, even if his brother's done something wrong. I think that just makes right. a good story. And um, I think it's a fun way to involve uh, the whole family again because I really do like the Fisher-Baldwin stories. Uh, you know, if it was something, let's say, that involved Gloria and Jeffrey and then obviously Michael would be involved with Lauren trying to sort of, you know, decipher right from wrong and what to do and right. what not to do and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, how Gloria would handle that, you know. And, and to me, I get the feeling, and I, I don't know if other fans see it this way, I get the feeling that you are Gloria's baby favorite? or her favorite. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All due respect to Michael, I think uh, yeah. I think she's got a soft spot for her son, Kevin. I think so, too. I, I see it being portrayed that way. And I don't think Michael's actually caught on to that. To the fact that Kevin's the favorite? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, maybe he knows and he just doesn't want to accept it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. And what's it, what's it like working with what's it, what's it like working with Jeannie Cooper? I love the chemistry between uh, Kevin and Mrs. C. <laughs> I just love I love that you put it that way. Like, that I, Kevin and Miss and Mrs. Chancellor have chemistry, which I totally agree with. Um, <laughs> uh, what's it like working with her? I mean, she's just she's a legend. She's absolutely yeah. legendary and spectacular. And you know, Jeannie always likes to say that the star of the show is the show. I disagree. I think Jeannie's the star of the show. Yeah. And she's, I just, I love her to pieces. I think she owned the moon. She's definitely an icon of the show and a big star. Oh, yeah, for sure. And we just have a lot of fun together. Um, Working with her is never boring. She always, Jeannie loves to try and make me laugh. (laughs) (laughs) She, and she usually succeeds. Who's the prankster on the set? Is there a prankster? Uh... There's a couple of pranksters. Jeannie is Jeannie. I, again, I'm going right back to Jeannie. Jeannie will like, you know, goose me. Jeannie will like, you know, <laughs> in in the middle of a scene, or you know, she'll oh just look God. at me from from across a, um, a room if we're in a set together, and then, uh, you know, she she knows how to keep a straight face, and then I'll just look at her for a second, and then I'll bust out laughing, and then I'm the one who gets home. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, Jeannie's a prankster. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have any more questions, uh, Twitter questions, before we take callers? Anne? Um, well, I have Jen from New Zealand just saying hello to you. Hi, Jen from New Zealand. How uh, how far do we – can we ask her how far behind the show is in New Zealand, or is that going to take too long for her to – Oh, no, she's in the chat room. Oh, she's in the chat room. Yeah. 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 So, so, so what's Jen, going on in New what's Zealand? The, what's the storyline going on in uh, New Zealand, Jen? And then we'll uh, – We'll catch up with her in a second. Then anyone want to let her chat back to me? Um, okay. I'll wait for her to respond. Um, I'll go ahead and start taking a call. You've got a lot of fans. And I'll go ahead and bring Michelle on first, the one that you met in um, in Atlantic City that, oh, that yeah. told you about our show and about the dodgeball gift. Uh, Michelle, you're on with Greg. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hi, Michelle. Fine. How are you? Good. So I met you in Atlantic City. That's right. Back in uh, that was my first, that was my first event. That was, oh really? Yeah. Wow, and you were from New York, yeah? No, Philly. Oh, Philly. That's right. That's right. <laughs> cool. Um, well, I, I hope did... it was. I hope it was uh, all that in a bag of chips. Oh my God! <laughs> I I was like posting pictures like crazy on Twitter. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I I had a ball. I it was like now that I watch you guys on Y and R it's just like it's surreal for me that I actually met you guys. Yeah, it's kinda of crazy, huh? Yeah. So, um how's your dog? I hear him barking. That's not my dog. My dog No, not- that was my dog. Oh. <laughs> if my dog was outside he would be barking. Oh, uh, so I just wanted to call in and say hello. Hi. And um, thank you for doing the show. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for calling in. I appreciate your call. And um, and I still haven't gotten that gift, but I know it's up there somewhere. So I just 
I look forward I to recording it all. I know, Yeah. I, well, I, I um, hope. I hope you like it. I couldn't figure out what to get you, and um, I, I, I hope you like it. I, I'm sure I will, because frankly, any any gift from a fan is really uh, above and beyond and totally appreciated. So thank you in advance. I really, really appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, thank you. Michelle, and thanks Hi. for telling Greg to come on our show, too. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, you started this whole thing, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye. And I have an answer from Jen in New Zealand. She said, sadly, it's not on anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's going to have to move to Australia, obviously. I know. (laughs) Oh, that's awful. Okay. Come to Um, the U.S. Yeah. Up next is David. David, you're on with Greg. Go ahead. Hey, Greg. Hey, David. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I just wanted to let you know um, that one scene with you and Chris in the boxing ring. Oh yeah, um, that yeah, you did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally blew me away. Oh wow! And you haven't, <laughs> and you haven't stopped. Thanks so much. Wow, that awesome. really, uh, that really means a lot. Uh, that was that was some challenging stuff we had to do because it was so physical with. Um, you know, with all the the boxing, and then on top of that, trying to, you know, in a technical way, make sure the punches were landing the way they were supposed to, and then, you know, being able to sort of take that emotional journey while that was happening, that was really tough for me. So I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I did. Um, did um, what kind of preparations do you have to do for that scene? Um, I took some boxing classes, quite a few of them, actually, and um, beyond that we had a stunt coordinator there that day because, you know, Christian and I couldn't just start wailing on each other. We had to choreograph the scene. And, uh, again, I think it was, uh, so yeah, we spent quite a bit of time in, um, in boxing classes. And then, uh, the day of, we worked with, um, a stunt coordinator. And to me that I, what I remember about those scenes being so hard was that sometimes you can get lost in the, in the emotion of the story and just forget that you're acting and just being present in that moment. But I think when you had to add on top of that these specific, you know, moves, it was making me, um, you know, putting me in my head a little bit and and making me worried about instead of just having to act, I also had to, to dance, you know, and that was... Um, mm-hmm. So I remember I remember that being really difficult. But um, But I also remember watching those scenes and after I saw them, being really happy with them. That's great. Well, thank you very much for talking to me, buddy. You keep My up pleasure. the good work. Thanks so much, and thanks for calling. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Nathan. No problem. You know All what right. I was wondering? Did With being caught up in the scenes, have you ever accidentally punched somebody? No, but, you know, I um, one, one of my, like, tricks is I, I like to curse during, if I'm doing, like, a, you know, if I'm supposed to be angry, I'll curse a lot in rehearsals because... You know, I think in in my life that's what I do when I get angry. So it sort of uh, right. it helps sort of get the juices flowing. And there's been more than one occasion when you know I kind of lose myself in the take, and I'll and I'll blow a take by by saying <laughs> a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish we had a blooper reel. Yeah, right. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, up next is another Pam. Pam, welcome to the show. You're on with Greg. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hi, Pam. I'm fine. How are you? Good. I've enjoyed you so much as Kevin. You're you're totally awesome. Thanks. Thank you I so have much. two questions. Okay. Who on the show would you like to work with more that you haven't really worked with a lot? Hmm. Or at all. Well, you know, it's funny. I don't yeah, that's true. Or, or at all. There's very few actors on the show or very few characters that Kevin hasn't interacted with, at least someone. Um, I think... Someone who I kind of get like bits and pieces of every once in a blue moon is uh, Phyllis, and um, I think we're peripherally in really sort of involved in each other's lives. As like her son is my best friend and my brother is her best friend, and um, mm-hmm. so and I think Michelle's so uh, such a great actress that uh, it would be fun to work with her some more. Um, and um, let's see who else. 
Uh, I think Peter is wonderful, Peter Bergman. It would be great to, you know, for Kevin and Jack to cross paths some more, I think, too. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, and then, uh, then then there's everyone else who I who I think is wonderful, too, but a lot of those people I, I get to, you know, Mrs. Chancellor and, and Chloe and Gloria and Jeffrey and Michael and Daniel and there's, you know, so many actors that I do get to work with regularly. Oh, I actually just uh, I'm starting a story right now with uh, uh, with Michael Meaty, which is um, oh. kind of a first. I don't think... I, we may have been in the same scene together once or twice, but uh, we had some scenes together the other day that was uh, the first time we've really, really worked together. And he's, well, that's uh, great. Yeah, he's terrific. Oh. So I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, to, to working with him somewhat. And my okay. other question is, um, career-wise, um, is there something that you want to do that you haven't done yet? Yeah, I uh, um, I really like to be doing some more stage work, and I think when I think about what's going to be the next stage in my career, um, you know, somewhere down the road, I'd like to work on. Uh, I love working in television, so I'd like to work on another television show where the schedule wasn't so um, persistent and demanding, and I'm not. Saying I'm ready to like a nighttime, like a nighttime show. Yeah, or actually, ideally, I think about like a cable show that only works about five or oh, six months okay. out of the year, like a cable mm-hmm. evening uh, primetime show, and that would give me um, an actual hiatus, which we don't really get on YNR, and that would give me time to you know take a few months off and go to New York maybe and pursue some uh, some stage work in New York or even some stage work here in LA. So uh, I'm not in any rush because I love my job and I'm happy to be here, but I think. Sometimes when I think about what I imagine will be next for me, I think it involves more uh, more stage work. Mm-hmm. Well, thank and, you. Keep up the good work, and, and we all love you on the show. Well, thanks. And You're I think great. That, to add to that, I also, you know, I just want to be able to look back when I'm 80 and say, oh, it was a really fun career. So as long as I get to work, I'll be happy, whether it's in TV or movies or, you know, wherever. Online. Well, your fans will follow you wherever you go. Awesome. Well, I appreciate exactly, that. exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Pam. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, Frank. Bye. Oh, thank bye. You, too. you too. That's what I was going to ask you: is if you'd ever think of doing a web series. Those are, you know, short stints and fun to watch. And we follow a lot of those, and a lot yeah. of the actors um, from different yeah, soaps have been on there. I guess I would. I guess I would consider, uh, you know, if it, if the right project came along. Sure. I did. Um, I did one episode of uh, uh, Andrew Miller and Eden Regal had uh, Imaginary Bitches, and I yeah. did an episode of that, which was uh, which was super fun. So yeah, if the if the right project came along, I would absolutely do another one. I could totally see you in True Blood as a vampire. I would love to. Oh yeah. Who do we need to call? Person. How do we make that happen? Yeah, well, we'll we'll get on it for you. Okay. Okay. Good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Ten uh, percent. The, the check for ten percent will be in the mail ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you said you. hook up with Carolyn Hennessy. She just finished doing uh, some episodes of True Blood and asked her how she got on there and put in a good word for you. Oh, is that right? Good for her. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. All right. Up next is Kyle. Kyle, you're on with Greg. Go ahead. Hi, Greg. How are you? Hey, Kyle. I'm fine. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, I think both of my questions have already been answered by other people, so I'm just going to just kind of like um, tell you I think you're doing such a great great job on the show, and I think you were talking about all the fantastic storylines you've been involved in, and the only thing I can think of, it just must be a credit to your talent that the writers can just throw these different um, situations at you, and you just kind of get through it with aplomb because it's just been like, as you said, you've got these crazy storylines also with these, you know, very dramatic ones that you did with Emily O'Brien and then the ones with Tom. So I thought that was really, really great that you've got to pull through it and we always kind of root for you. So that's a, a, just an excellent, excellent job. Thanks. Thanks so much. And then um, my second thing was I was thinking about um, just the excellent rapport you have with the characters that you play with on the show, like whether it be Christian or Glory or Judith and then with it, with Jana and um, – Chloe, I, I'm mixing actors with their mm-hmm. character names sure, now, but I'm, I'm totally but, following you. <laughs> but it's just like I'm, I, I just think that it it just seems that you guys all genuinely enjoy working with each other. There's never any kind of lack of chemistry. Even when we were talking about when Diana DeGarmo joined the show, it just kind of like was started off kind of uneasy. But just she endeared herself to us, and it just almost seemed like she did the same with you guys on the show. Oh, for sure. So it's like, yeah. um, well, I also think too, it's like. Um, you know, and and I, I I guess the difference is, whatever it is that you do for work, 
um, no one's no one's pointing a camera at you, and you're not watching like a playback at the end of the day. But right. you know, um, I think there is a camaraderie that happens with people that you work with, and mm-hmm. a mutual respect, and and uh, and varying levels of how much you like or love somebody. And so I think that because I work with so many great people that I care about, um, it's kind of just like tapping into a feeling that I have for that person and right. altering it in some way. It's like, all right, I'm not in love with Liz Hendrickson, but I love her, so all I have right. to do is just sort of like manipulate that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And same thing with like Judith. It's like, all right, she's not really my mom, but I have strong maternal feelings for her, and I can just sort of you know tweak that. So I I I, I think that's probably what you see is that I really have a lot of admiration and. And it, it, I work with. it definitely comes through. I mean, you can definitely see the chemistry on the screen. And then now it's just getting more exciting watching the show because if all of these icons of daytime are joining the show, now with Jeannie Francis on, and then you've got, you know, um, right. Darnell and um, Debbie on the show, and then you've, you know, especially with the icons of, you know, that are already on Young and the Rest of So that must be another exciting element to the set. I mean, sadly, you we see people come and go, much like we're going to be doing with Eileen, but. Um, how does that feel on the show? Like just like working with such, I mean, eventually I think you're going to be one of the icons of daytime just with Kevin Fisher's role. But I mean, with with those guys on there now, how does it feel on set? Is it just like, is it? I'm sure it's probably very welcoming, but is it just kind of add to that camaraderie with everyone with the with the way the soaps are going on now that there's so many so so fewer on the air? I have to say, um, in my honest experience, I think it's warm and welcoming, like you said, because uh, that's that's how it is there but I think that given the state of not just daytime television but television mm-hmm. in general where it's getting harder and harder to uh, keep audiences invested and there's more uh, choices and um, I think it's kind of more of like an all hands on deck right. uh, approach to our day and you know I think we're all invested in putting out a good show and doing it efficiently and um and quickly and in a way that sort of keeps the bosses happy and uh, keeps the costs down. So it's really, <laughs> there's not a ton of time to, you know, to do anything than just sort of get the work done and, and right. make it fast and good. And so I good. think, uh, you know, it's certainly warm and it's definitely, there's like a, hey, okay, we're all in, we all have a common goal here and it's to, it's to keep the show up and running and, and I think we're doing a good job. I think uh, you are. I I won't take up any more, too much more time, but I just wanted to say you guys are doing a fantastic job keeping us so much, keeping me especially interested. I've been watching the show for several years now, and it all kind of started with the Phyllis and Nick affair years back. But I mean, just the storylines that you got, you especially are in and Christian are just just fascinating. And I'm honestly looking forward to seeing you working with Adam. That's going to be a lot of fun because Michael Muni is kind of. Um, been this huge new character on the show that I think fans have just kind of embraced. So it's going to be fun to yeah. seeing you guys work together. So yeah, good luck and thank you so much. And uh, those are really uh, thoughtful questions, and I appreciate it. No problem. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank, yeah. you, too. thank Bye. you. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. All right. Up next is area code 610. You're on with Greg. Go ahead. Hi, Greg. Hi. I, ac- I actually met you at Atlantic City as well. Oh, you did? Yes, I did, and you were just amazing. Um, Thanks. Are you calling from Philadelphia, too? I am. I was the one that offered you a ride back to Villanova. Oh, yes, I remember. (laughs) And I, I, when I heard 610, I was like, oh, that's Villanova. Yep. Yeah. Um, Again, my question has already been answered, but is there anybody, um, is there anywhere that the story hasn't gone that you would want it to go, and do you prefer to be bad or good on the show? Hmm. Um, I'd, I'd say I prefer to be bad because, okay, you know, I I think I'm good in real life, so it's kind of uh, more of a departure to uh-huh. play someone who's bad, and, you know, um, so that's always fun. And uh, is there a place I'd like the story to go? Yeah, I mean, there's always, you know, there's whenever I uh, hear from a writer about a new turn that's coming or something that's coming up, I'm always like, oh, that's fun. That's something I haven't done before. Like I won't give anything away, but the the story that's going to start happening with uh, Kevin and Chloe and Adam is uh, is really interesting, and that's going to be fun. And then beyond that, I think um, uh, you know, I think more family dynamics. I think there's so plenty more stories to be told within the Fisher Baldwin family that that can be fun. Right. And curious too, and that's 
I'd like to see and maybe uh Kevin as a dad someday. You know, I mean he's a stepdad to to yeah. Amelia and we've seen him sort of uh start to sort of embrace uh children in his life. You know, there's uh his relationship with Lucy, but I think uh for him to um Well I you definitely there, have a there, great connection with the girl that plays Delia. Yeah, for sure. But I, I would imagine there would be some uh apprehension on his part to sort of pass on his DNA, knowing what a, oh, absolutely. What an uh, uphill battle it has been for him to sort of, you know, conquer some demons. So I think that could be an interesting story at some point. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm not in any rush. Just, you know, there's plenty of time to tell them all, I hope. Good. Well, yeah. I look forward to keep seeing you. Thanks. <laughs> all right. And, and, I, and uh, maybe next time I'm in Atlantic City, I'll, I'll take you up on that ride. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> All right. All thank right. You so thank much. you. Bye. Uh-huh. Thank you. Bye. Would you All ever right, think Sarah. about working behind the camera? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I just like being part of the creative process. I always even say I don't even I don't I don't need to always act in my life. I just need to create mm-hmm. and yeah be involved in something that's artistic. And you know when I'm when I'm not busy at work, I like doing work on my house and work in my backyard and you know things that still sort of stimulate and inspire me in, in a creative way that's not that's not just acting. But, yeah, I can yeah. totally uh, get into directing or producing at some point. All right. Well, we have one last caller before our time's up. Okay. Uh, area code 864, you're on with Greg. Go ahead. Hey, it's Blythe. Hello? Hi, Blythe. Hi, Blythe. Hello. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm going to call you <laughs> Kevin. I don't know why I just did that. Hi, Greg. I'm I want to, you know... I watched I watched um, Dawson's Creek and I loved your character on Dawson's Creek. Oh, I was a big da- I was a big Dawson's Creek fan, but I'm a bigger I am a bigger Kevin fan. Probably Roger's card to Kevin. Had a um, go. I'm crazy myself, so <laughs> okay. I love his. <laughs> Aren't we all? Come on now. Dragon <laughs> Pam will attest to that because I call and I babble. So, but I have like I. Do you ever want Kevin? I don't know if anyone's asked this. I've tried to listen the whole time, but would you like it if Kevin got to be a parent? I mean, I know he's you know a stepdad now, but if if Chloe and you know Kevin, Kevin had actually it, had funny, um, their own. I wonder if you were you were probably on hold during the end of that last call because it's exactly what um, I was saying is that I think he'd be there'd probably be some apprehensive appreh- apprehension on his part to pass on his DNA. I would think, because given uh, given everything that he had to sort of conquer, it's sort of uh, that's a lot to potentially pass on to a child. And I think, you know, in my rational mind, I can think that well, Kevin wasn't born with those demons. It was that he was uh, the victim of abuse, and um, yeah. and I imagine that that could be a, an interesting story mm-hmm. to tell, where maybe Kevin is concerned that, you know. What if it's uh-huh. what if it's just part of the DNA, and what if it has nothing to do with, you know, it's like a whole nature versus nurture thing. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think I think that would be an interesting story. And again, not as simple as, oh, cool, Kevin and Chloe are pregnant, and then there's a baby. There'd be some <laughs> there'd be some anxiety there. And I do I love like you know I love Liz Hendrickson and you guys I, I love do. you as a pair. Yeah, it's thanks. great. She's hilarious. I follow both of you on Twitter and I think that she's just so funny. Yeah, she's and, great. You know, she's great. I'm glad, but I just had to call. I was listening. I was trying not to call in because you know. Well, but, I'm glad uh, you did, and, uh, and I hope I answered. Uh, I hope I answered your question appropriately. Okay. Well, thank cool. you. All right. Thank, thank you, Blythe. Thanks, Blythe. Uh, there was a storyline that started to develop between Kevin and Billy, and it kind of fizzled after that. Would you like to have a, a friendship or something with? Uh, or would, do you think Kevin would like a friendship with uh, with Billy? Yeah, yeah, we're like frenemies. Yeah, we have a <laughs> we have a bromance. Uh, yeah, it's, exactly. Uh, Billy, Billy's great, and Billy and I have a great um, off screen rapport, and I think that sort of uh, is why we get to have so much fun and uh, on camera. And I think I think he's such a great actor. And it's really fun to go toe to toe with him because, uh, you know, I think I think we're when we work, we're just sort of trying to sort of uh, get each other a little bit, and so it makes the scenes uh, they're always different every time we do them. It's not, nothing is sort of like set in stone. We always try and surprise each other a little bit, and that makes them fun. Yeah. 
And I uh, have a quick question for you, if you don't mind. Um, you mentioned about wanting to do theater. Mm-hmm. Can you sing then? No, I cannot. I mean, Aww. that's what I uh, I just rephrase that. I can absolutely sing. I just don't know how to. So it's okay. Um, <laughs> so I think when, if or when the right part comes along, or when I'm at a point in my life where I really want to commit to it, I just, I think I just would have to hunger down and learn the skills, how to sing properly, and then. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I'd have another uh, tool in my arsenal. But as of now, I mean, you know, I sing in the shower and in the car, but that's about it. <laughs> um, maybe you could contact Diana DeGarmo then. Oh, yeah. I could <laughs> when learn you're ready for too. that. I could learn a thing or two from her. <laughs> yeah, yeah she, she's fantastic. What a, what a, what a fun, one little fireball she is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And it was fun watching the, the, the YNR flash mob as well. I thought that was hysterical. Oh, my God, I love that. Yeah, wasn't that fun? I think, you know, again, and, and there's with all this, like, digital content that can get put online really inexpensively and really quickly, it's a fun way to, here's a fun little gift to the fans. Yeah. We had, we had a lot of fun doing I couldn't it. figure out if it was going to be an episode of what was coming up on Y&R, and then, it, you know, it went into it a little bit more, and it's like, yeah. oh, my God, this is just so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. We had a lot of fun with that. Well, I think you guys uh, should do more of that. Yeah. Okay, I'll uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let the powers that be know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, Greg, this uh, has been one of my favorite hours of all time. You're, oh, uh, you're, you're, you're a real treat, and we would love to have you back on uh, later in the fall after Kevin's developed more storyline to uh, talk about. Sure, and, that, uh, that would be great, and this was, a, this was a delight for me, too. So thank you both, and thank thanks you. for everybody who was listening and to everyone who... Uh, tweeted in or chatted in or called in and uh, this was a fun way to wind down my week so thanks again oh, no oh, problem well you have you a go. great weekend and thank we you guys will tweet, and, uh, and we I'll will see you guys in the fall okay alright all right. great thanks Greg. thank you God bless bye bye alright wow how oh, wow I'm kind of like starstruck right now Kevin Fisher hello <laughs> I know I just can't believe I just got done talking to Kevin Fisher for an hour <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a what a great uh, interview that was! Another yeah. another amazing uh, another addition to our list. Um, wow, so what do you think about that? <laughs> I think I just expressed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, as I told people in the chat room, I'm not feeling well today, but it really helped. I didn't know if I was going to be able to participate a lot in the interview, but. Once you get going, and when you have such great guests, it's pretty hard to sit back and not say anything. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, he, was you, so, he, was, he was so nice. Just, he was just and very, I, just think that, uh, I think that our, our friends that are listening feel the same way. You know, they really yeah. had a fun time with him. Well, that's great. Well, uh, if you... Uh, we're going to be back in a half hour at a different link. Uh, so if you're interested in listening to our interview with Jen Lilly, who plays Maxie on General Hospital, uh, we'll be back in a half hour. So we're going to end now, and then we will do um, that show at in a half hour. So see yes, you in a few. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. And those of yep. us in the Midwest, it's 8 p.m. Central Time. Yep. So, so we will see you break. in a little while. <laughs> and we will be back in just a few minutes, all right? Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.